Okay, we're just going to have a look at the Curtius rearrangement, or the Curtius reaction, it's often called. Um, basically, we take um, a carboxylic acid, like we've got here, and we make this acyl azide uh, in situ, which then rearranges to give an isocyanate, which can then be attacked by a nucleophile, so to give these kind of compounds, so we've got carbamates if this is an oxygen, or we've got some urea type of compounds if it's an amine, and so on. But this, this could be any nucleophile, really. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the mechanism. So the first step involves basically um, taking a carboxylic acid and reacting it with uh, diphenyl uh, phosphoryl azide, which if you look in the literature, um, usually together and it all reflux together and this decomposes in situ but this is what's generated so uh, diphenyl this is a typical um, is our transfer agent so we got the as a diphenyl moiety and n3 there like that Okay, so the N3 transfers onto there just by attacking the oxygen on there and then transfers across to give our first intermediate which I've drawn up there in green just add that like that it's, It is worthwhile noting the resonance structure here. That's why I'm a big fan of writing resonance structures simply because you know you can actually see some some of the resonance structures actually look like the product you're gonna get so it's very useful to do that. So if we oops resonance structure arrows are always drawn like that so I'll draw the resonance structure. These arrows are just the movement of the electrons. Remember, when we're talking about electrons and electron density, it's just we're talk. We're sorry, we're actually mentioning the density, the where where it's more likely to find a lot of electrons. Um, but they're they're all. It's really it's it's more or less uh, the shape of the orbital here. It, that's the reality of where the electrons are. So this is just to make our diagrams a bit easier to follow, really. So there we are. And again, we created a really good leaving group, which is nitrogen. Okay, so we've, we create that, we lose nitrogen, and that will give us this compound, or this intermediate, so I should I say. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw the electrons leaving so the nitrogen takes its electrons back so it leaves this vacant, so you've got electrons here nitrogen gas comes off to leave to leave you with um, this acyl azide um, uh, well the um, the nitrine of that should I say and this rearranges now. This is a re the Smith, re sh sorry, the Curtius rearrangement. Now, now you can either push electrons in there and move it out, or I've seen it done concertedly, where uh, let's draw these electrons going in here. So they push in there, and they move across there. Now that is one way you you will see it written and it's going to give the same product either way but I think this is a little bit confusing sometimes if you're trying to grasp what's going on that is going to give C double on oh, so that's your isocyanate and all the electrons are happy as it stands there um, if we do push electrons in let's just take this a little step further I'll draw this little digression in green let's let's draw start again nitrogen is carbene 
has a vacant orbital. In fact, let's just move those electrons that are, are in the orbital here. Let's draw them in like this. And it's got a vacant orbital as well. Okay, doing nothing because it's had its electrons taken away from it. So if we push these electrons in here to form a double bond across there, then that oxygen is going to be the weakest point. So we've got like a, a sigma orbital here pushing into a pi system. So they'll, they'll, they'll flip open first. So that should give, let's draw that, R1 O minus N happy now because it's not uh, lost its charge and we put that in, in a vacant orbital so we've picked up charge here now and that's because this had a negative charge here from the electrons uh, that was left on nitrogen this then pushes in, so it's a bit like the tetrahedron intermediate. And we can either go backwards and give us the uh, the nitrine compound there, or you can have a uh, little migration here, so a little sigmatropic shift into the vacant orbital of nitrogen. Whoops, green. And that's exactly what happens, and that's going to give you this compound. So we go back to the beginning. So I think if you go through it stepwise, it's actually a bit easier to grasp. One thing it is a bit confusing, I suppose, is that you've not labeled this as having a negative charge, and that's where these electrons go here. Um, so it's like generating negative charge from nowhere. But you'll often see it um, denoted in this concerted fashion to give the uh, the isocyanate, cyanate, cyanate, there we are, there, okay. So let's move on a little bit with the isocyanate, just move this down, just keep that up there so we know what stage we're at. So this can now get attacked here, it's susceptible to um, nucleophilic attack at this carbon here. And if you think uh, electrons being withdrawn by the nitrogen and being withdrawn by uh, the oxygen as well, so it's quite delta positive there. So we have some nucleophile, I tend to write nucleophiles like this, just to, as a generic nucleophile. And they'll come in there, bang, nice little wiggle on curly arrow double-headed arrow like that. I always push the electrons uh, towards the more electronegative element if I can. So drive it over there to oxygen then it's going to come back to the, either ping that off or pick up a proton from a proton source. Um, I call that solve for solvent for now. So you're in a protic solvent or the conjugate acid of the nucleophile. Okay so that should give us R, I'm going to say it's a proton, it's picked up, NH. There's our carbon, I won't draw C now, and there's our nucleophile. So that's our product from the uh, Curtius rearrangement. Very, very good way of moving from a carboxylic acid to a, um, a nice little uh, linked species here either, like I say, it can be carbamate, uh, carbamate, uh, sorry, it can be a carbamate, sorry, or urea or something like that, but it can be something else as well. So that is a Curtis rearrangement.